If you are a parent and you've ever wondered what strategies or things you could do to either increase or decrease a behavior, then learning about reinforcement and punishment will be helpful to you. In this episode of Behavior Nation's Applied Behavior Analysis Parent Education Series of Videos, we are going to talk about reinforcement and punishment. Today, we will discuss the basics of reinforcement and punishment and define what each term means. Then we will review the different types of reinforcement and punishment. Finally, we will review a disclaimer. Here are the basics of reinforcement and punishment. Reinforcement will increase the behavior that it follows, whereas punishment will decrease the behavior. So think simply, reinforcement increases, punishment decreases. There are different types of reinforcement and punishment. There is positive and negative. This may sound a little bit confusing, but think of it like this. When you are having a positive reinforcement or punishment, you are adding something. When you have a negative reinforcement or punishment, you are removing something. For example, with positive reinforcement, something desirable is added. If you have negative reinforcement, then something aversive is removed. In both these instances, the behavior will increase. One way you could deliver positive reinforcement is by providing your child with social praise or an item or activity that they enjoy. Negative reinforcement could be removing something that they don't like, perhaps turning off an annoying sound or removing homework because they already finished the whole two problems that you asked them to do. Next, punishment. There is positive punishment where something aversive is added and there is negative punishment where something the child desires is removed. You could think of positive punishment as adding a chore to your child's list of chores for the day or negative punishment by removing their free time. In both these instances, the behavior will decrease. If you hear your ABA provider discussing stimulus in terms of a reinforcing stimulus or a punishing stimulus, simply think of this as a change in the environment of the individual. A stimulus could be something that someone says, it could be a demand, it could be social praise, it could be an item that is delivered. You could consider the stimulus to be the thing changed. Let's learn more about reinforcement. Some things that can make reinforcement more valuable to the individual are deprivation, immediacy, size, and contingency. You always want to consider DISC when you are working to reinforce your child. Deprivation involves how long the individual has not had access to the reinforcing item. Something that they have not been able to play or engage with for a longer period of time is going to be more enticing to them. Next, immediacy. Immediacy simply refers to the time between when the child engages in the behavior that you want to see and when you deliver the reinforcement. You want to deliver the reinforcement as quickly as you can following the behavior you have selected to increase. Next, size. You can consider this almost like Goldilocks and the three bears. One was too big, one was too small, and one was just right. You want to make sure your reinforcement is just right. It shouldn't be too big that your child engages in challenging behaviors in order to access it or too small such that your child isn't motivated to earn it. Next, consider contingency. Contingency simply means that your child gains access to the reinforcement for engaging in the behavior you want to see and does not gain access when they are engaging in other behaviors. You can consider this consistency and that you will consistently provide your child with access to reinforcement for the behavior you want them to engage in, wherein you will not provide them with reinforcement when they engage in other behaviors. Let's review some of the benefits of reinforcement. Reinforcement has several benefits. One of the benefits of reinforcement is that it teaches your child to engage in new skills. New skills can help your child to engage in their environment in new, interesting and adaptive ways. Next, it can teach replacement behaviors. Replacement behaviors are very important because you want to teach your child what to do instead of engaging in a challenging behavior. 
it can also increase the appropriate behaviors that your child engages in. Fourth, it can also feel good for you as the parent to deliver the reinforcement. It's fun to be the exciting person that is associated with praise and fun activities. And finally, it's important to note that reinforcement does not always need to be an item or activity. You can start with providing your child with reinforcement in the form of a tangible item or activity and pair this with social praise. You can work to slowly fade out the tangible item and reinforcement and simply give them social praise instead. Now, let's review punishment. There are some things to consider when you are thinking about a punishment procedure. First, the individual that is delivering the punishment can become a punisher. This means that the child may associate that person or individual with punishment. Second, punishment is typically only effective when the punisher is present. That means that the behavior may decrease in the presence of the punisher, but remain the same when the punisher is not present. You want to be sure that your child is engaging in appropriate behaviors when you are not there. This is why it is important to consider a reinforcement intervention first. Next, punishing one behavior could lead to other challenging alternative behaviors. Remember, a behavior serves a function for your child. They are doing the challenging behavior because they have a need or a skill that they have not learned. If you are punishing one behavior, it is possible that they can engage in other challenging behaviors in order to meet that need. Next, it can model the inappropriate behavior for your child. A child that sees another individual engaging in a punishment procedure may model that behavior later on. Fifth, delivering a punishment procedure can also be reinforcing for the individual delivering the punishment. What I mean by that is that when you deliver a punishment, likely the challenge in behavior stops. This means that the person who is doing the punishment may be reinforced by the stop or pause of the challenging behavior and thus lead to increased use of punishment procedures in the future. Finally, punishment procedures should always be done with a reinforcement procedure as well. If you are going to teach your child what not to do, you need to teach them what to do instead. This is why you always should have a reinforcement procedure in place for the replacement behavior. Let's review different types of punishment. There is positive punishment where something aversive is added. There are three different types that you can consider. Response blocking, overcorrection, and reprimands. Response blocking is simply blocking your child from completing the action. This could be something like placing your child's hands in their lap if they attempt to hit their hand towards their head. Overcorrection is a method where you have the child overcorrect the error or in behavior that they engaged in. For example, if your child engaged in ripping up their paper at their desk, an overcorrection procedure could be for them to throw away all the pieces of paper, clean their desk, push in their chair, and then organize their materials. Finally, reprimands. Reprimands are simple. Stop, don't do that, that's not okay. We've all heard them used with children in the past. However, be wary of this. They are punishment procedures. Next, let's talk about negative punishment. Negative punishment is where a desirable stimulus is removed. This could be a time out, or a response cost. You've often seen parents deliver timeouts to their children when they are engaging in challenging behaviors. You can simply think of a timeout as a period of time where there is no reinforcement for the child. Next, a response cost. A response cost is simply when the child loses something valuable. You could do this with the form of a token economy. For example, if your child engages in a challenging behavior, you could remove a token from their token board. I want to note that punishment and reinforcement procedures are highly effective methods to work with your child. However, 
please be sure that you discuss these ideas with your applied behavior analysis provider before using any punishment procedures. Also, be sure to discuss with them the ways that you can use reinforcement effectively to focus on the correct behaviors to increase or teach. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Behavior Nation's Applied Behavior Analysis Parent Education Series of videos on reinforcement and punishment. If you have any questions, please email us at info at behaviornation.com, call us at 844-262-8466, or check us out on our website, www.behaviornation.com.